All right, folks, Mark here again, cooking books. Y'all know how I do. I cook the books and I bring the info. So really quick, I want to talk to you guys about things concerning the spirit, spiritual, spirituality. Uh, real, real quick, I'm not going to keep this, make this video too long. Uh, what we must first, what we need to understand is that the world that we see, everything that we see, that we can physically see, we can tangibly touch, we can, uh, that has a corporal form and we can interact with uh, by our five senses, sight, sound, uh, smell, taste, uh, touch, right? All of these senses that can interact and engage any corporal material form is not the real world. That's not the real world. Everything that our five senses can allow that allow us to engage in is not the real world. I want to make that abundantly clear. What that is, I'm not just going to say it's not the real world and not tell you what it is. What it is, is uh, what's called a shell, a shell to the real world. Uh, how can I illustrate this? What can I give you? Something, a turtle. Think of a turtle. An analogy, this is a good analogy. Our shell world is analogous to a turtle. If you see a turtle and a turtle will uh, sense danger, it will withdraw itself inside of its shell. Now, if you just see the shell of the turtle and I ask you, what is that that that's sitting over there? You could tell me that's a turtle. And for simplistic purposes, you're absolutely right, that's a turtle. But it's not a turtle, it's the shell of the turtle. If we want to get technical, let's get technical. If the turtle withdraws within the shell and you can't see the head, the feet or anything, its feet and head completely withdrawn within its shell. At that point, what you're looking at is the shell of the turtle, not the turtle. But for simplistic purposes, you can say that's a turtle and you would not be wrong. No one would say you're completely wrong. That is a turtle. For all intents and purposes, it is a turtle. Uh, technically, uh, to get a uh, into the minutiae and the details, that is a shell of the turtle. If you go over and look beyond the shell, the turtle is inside of the shell. That's analogous to the world. The world that we see is the shell. If we get close up and uh, become in conscious proximity, I like that terminology, with conscious proximity of the shell, we'll see behind the shell the turtle, you know, using the analogy, if you get close up to the shell, the uh, conscious proximity of the world, the shell of the world, you'll look behind and uh, if you, you're fortunate enough to get a glimpse, and I use fortunate, not loosely, but but uh, very strict, strictly, I use the term, uh, if you're fortunate enough, because a lot of us have been so veiled our eyes are so veiled and so covered uh, that there is no illumination. There is no enlightenment. And we believe, or we can only believe that which we see. That is a very dangerous state to exist in. Very harmful, detrimental state for one to be in, where only your natural sight, your smell, your taste, your ability to touch and hear are the only uh, vehicles and instruments of directionality that you have and that you function and operate with. You are truly uh, underdeveloped species. But if you are fortunate enough to get a glimpse behind the shell, you'll see the real world like you see the real turtle. I say that to say this. The good, the, the, the Second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen says, "Set your sight on things that are unseen, not on things that are seen, because the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal." First uh, Corinthians says, "Eyes have not seen." Ears have not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things God has for those that love him. John, I believe, first John says, that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh, and that which is of the spirit of the spirit. I say all that to say, 
You can only discern the spirit with spirit. Intellectualism cannot discern spirit. Uh, Socratic methods, uh, a line of reasoning cannot discern spirit. Uh, deductive and inductive reasoning, syllogism, syllogistical reasoning cannot discern or differentiate spirit. Uh, IQ, high IQ, intellectual quotient cannot discern spirit. Uh, genius cannot discern spirit. S spirit only can discern spirit. For the scripture, the good book says, what, what knoweth the things of man but the spirit that is in him? Likewise, the things of God is known by the spirit of God. So only in the spirit can you see the spirit, true things that we're told to set our sights on. Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3 says, set your affections on things that which is above, not which not on things that's on the earth, that faded. There are seven planes of existence, folks. Some will say 14, depending on what source you want to uh, extrapolate your information from, but there are several, there are several planes of existence. And you can only interact, engage. You know, the, the good book says that uh, the things that were hid, God has revealed. Things that were hid in, in olden days, God has now revealed to us. And uh, again, only those with uh, Paul, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 says, I pray that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened. We can render that, I pray that the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your spirit may be open. And only having your spiritual eye, if you go into Egyptology, they'll call it the pineal gland, your third eye. Only having that open will you be able to see behind the shell and interact with the real world. When you reach that level of consciousness, you have truly transcended Three dimensionality. You have transcended uh, the the the, the uh, space time continuum that Einstein. We were so graced graced with by Einstein. Space time continuum. When you have uh, uh, Paul opened the eyes of your inner man, your inner being, your understanding, your heart, then you have transcended into what we would call the fourth dimension the fifth and the sixth dimension of existence. Uh, now you're operating from a divine, more, a di more of a divine self as opposed to uh, a corporal carnal self. Uh, we exist in a very dense plane. We are of the densest of all the planes. We are the densest. Uh, and this is what accounts for the difficulties that we all face every day. The difficulties have nothing to do with the shell world that we perceive, but rather the spiritual world, which is imperceivable or, or unperceivable to those who are not enlightened or opened uh, their brain or their mind haven't been opened or their eyes haven't been opened to the real world and the operations and the design and schemes and the real functionality uh, of, of, of which we are a part of. We are interconnected. We are the essence of uh, until we can start thinking operate and function from this standpoint, from this frame of reference, which is the spiritual realm, then we'll forever be subjugated to the corporal, the test that the terrestrial, uh, as opposed to the extraterrestrial, will be confined to the terrestrial. And as long as you're confined to the terrestrial, this is why people will commit suicide. This is why people will commit uh, murder and, 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 and all kinds of atrocities, because you will forever set your sight on that which is of the earthly uh, plane, and that which is of the earthly plane is temporary. So your problems, your situations, your challenges, if you are not able to transcend above that in terms of your mental plane, your, your consciousness and conscious awareness, if you are not aware of what's behind your challenges, then your challenges will get the best of you. But if you can acknowledge that your challenges uh, if you can employ fifth dimensional thinking or sixth dimensional thinking, if you can employ uh, higher planes of consciousness into your thought process, your challenges, the lion of your challenges will be mitigated and re relegated and regulated to that of a mouse because you understand that a challenge only comes to 
develop you, to encourage and advance you on this evolutionary chain that we're all on ladder or journey that we're all traversing. Until next time, y'all know how I do. I cook the books. I bring the info. Peace. If you like, share it, leave it. You know, you know what to do. Peace.